这里，嗯啊Arrived by boat, uh, it's uh, Hampton Court Palace, which you can see at the back side of me. So today I'm going to tell you about Hampton Court Palace and why this is uh, worth an entire video. Uh, Hampton Court Palace was uh, uh, built around 1515, so that's the 16th century or 500 years ago. Well, specifically, 503 years ago. Uh, it was built by uh, a Roman Catholic cardinal called uh, uh, Thomas Wolsey and he was in service of King Henry VIII at that time and in 1529, so 14 years after it was built, after the palace was built, it was uh, taken over by King Henry VIII and ever since King Henry VIII has lived here until the day that he died and enjoyed the, his stay here and during his reign he expanded the, the palace into what it is today. During the centuries, other kings and queens have expanded the palace even more. And that's why, which you will see later in the video, you will see different kinds of architectural styles. Uh, but the most famous, of course, is the Tudor style, which is really what you see behind me, with the large chimneys and the red brick stone. All right, well, let's move along to the palace. central heating 500 years ago so even the, the royalty they had to be provided kept warm by wood which was uh, brought from uh, the surrounding forests and in the middle of the great hall you have the fireplace and as you can see the tables were set around it and over there was the seat of the king and the queen in this case king henry the eighth and the guests were enjoying uh, food and music and dance basically just enjoying life. And moving on. This was really the dining table of the king and the queen and it was a little bit higher so they can overlook, symbolically overlook the entire room. architecture in this hall is, like most of the palace, a really unique ceiling, which is really carved from wood, is really authentic. Okay. Moving along. Beautiful These are emblems of uh, English noble houses. So in the past there were so many noble houses in England. Some of them had a claim to the throne, others had not. And others wished, wished they had a claim. <laughs> and uh, I think this is a tribute, to, uh, a tribute to the noble houses that were loyal to the king. So this is the, the great watching chamber, as it was called. Uh, you might wonder what the meaning was that. And uh, this chamber is directly located next to the great hall. And this is where uh, visitors to the king messengers, royalty, nobility from other houses. They were uh, made to, to wait and watch here until they got words whether or not the king would like their message and uh, their purpose of visit. And if the king liked it, then they were allowed to enter the private apartment of the king. Okay.
Privy Garden of Hampton Court Palace, just outside London. And behind us, you see a typical English garden, which was designed by King William III, who originally came from Holland, Belanda, and became King of England, together with his wife, Queen Mary II. But that's not the story I'm going to tell you. The story I'm going to tell you is about King Henry VIII. So, why King Henry VIII? Well, as you've probably already seen in a previous video of mine, is that King Henry VIII was, is one of the most famous kings in English history. He had six wives, consequently, and he was mostly famous because he was a cruel king, yet also ambitious, and he had six wives. Now, why is it special? Most kings, if not all kings, had only one wife and a lot of mistresses, but not six wives. So, besides that, uh, King Henry VIII also founded the Church of England, also called the Anglican Church. And by doing that, he broke with the Roman Catholic Church in Rome. Um, you can imagine that in the mid Middle Ages, in medieval times, when the Catholic Church was all powerful and all uh, royalty, all kings and queens in Europe were Roman Catholics. It was really uh, shocking that a Catholic king broke with the Catholic Church. Now his first wife, Queen Catherine of Aragon, who was a Spanish princess from a really powerful and uh, legendary royal house, she married King Henry VIII while she was still young. So the problem for King Henry was that he wanted badly, he badly wanted a boy, a son, a prince. Because in medieval times in Europe it was normal that a king was succeeded by a king, not a queen. Uh, women at the time didn't have that much respect. So a king must have a male heir. That was the kind of unwritten rule. The problem however is that Queen Catherine of Aragon, the wife of King Henry, she only had a daughter with King Henry, Princess Mary, who later became, became Queen Mary I. And because King Henry really wanted a boy and Queen Catherine couldn't provide him apparently with a boy, he grew bored of his wife. And because he grew bored of her, he started to look to other women. And one of those women was Anne Boleyn. And Anne Boleyn was at the time a very young, beautiful and manipulative woman. And she and her family, mostly her father and brothers, managed to manipulate the king into falling in love with Anne Boleyn. However, Anne insisted that she would marry with the king and not anything else. So the king desperately wanted to have a son and growing bored of his current wife, decided to asked the Catholic Church to cancel his marriage with Catherine. But the church did not allow that. So, angry with the church, he decided to just kick out the church. So which he did, and then all of Europe was of course shocked and angry to King Henry. And then King Henry didn't care, created a new, created a new church called the Church of England and became the head of that church. Basically became the Pope of his own church. And then, of course, that new church allowed his marriage to be cancelled. Surprise, surprise. And then he married Anne Boleyn, who became Queen Anne. And they had a daughter called Elizabeth, who later became Queen Elizabeth I. Very famous and very powerful queen. Although Henry was, King Henry was happy, he still wanted badly a boy, a prince. And despite several tries, several attempts, Anne couldn't provide him with a boy. And at some point she had a miscarriage. Being angry and disappointed with his wife, Queen Anne, he again started to look to other women and grew bored of his wife. And then politics happened, gossiping started, and before you knew it, Henry thought that Anne was cheating on him. And cheating on your husband in medieval times when your husband is king, it's not so smart. Regardless of it's true or not, just when the rumors start to happen, it's like, forget about it. Your life is done. Which happened is that her life was done. She was executed, her head was cut off, 
and her entire family was either imprisoned for life or also hanged or beheaded. Then a third wife came in, called Jane Seymour, and she did provide him with a son. Hooray, a son! So the whole country is happy, Henry is happy, finally a boy, and his name was Edward, and later became Edward VI. And then Jane died after giving birth to her son, which was really, really sad, especially because Henry VIII really loved Jane Seymour. This was really a marriage of love. Because Catherine Howard, after the death of Jane Seymour, was the next target of King Henry VIII. And she was very young and very flirty, and she knew her way around men, and therefore also a middle-aged man of like Henry VIII. Uh, Henry fell for her, married with her, but because she was still young and, and frivolous, she uh, uh, couldn't stay faithful to her husband. So basically she cheated. When the king found out, he had her arrested, had her guards drag her through the hallway of this palace, Hampton Palace, while she was screaming and, and, and asking for forgiveness of her king, which of course he didn't give her. Then she was executed, her head was chopped off. So, wife number five. My goodness, how can he keep up? And her name was called Anne, Anne of Cleve. And Henry thought she was very beautiful. In a time he didn't have photos yet, or Skype, or whatever. Um, you had to do it with paintings. And of course you can draw paintings the way you want them to be. So he thought she was very beautiful. Had her come over, everything was done. They married and he was like, hmm, actually she's not really that beautiful. And grew bored of her very quickly. And actually she was also very bored of him. So they decided to divorce and keep a friendship between them. So they moved on as friends. So we've reached the end of our story, which is wife number six. And her name was Catherine Barr. And King Henry wanted to marry her badly because she was beautiful, intelligent, and she spoke languages like French, Italian, and who knows what more, Latin. But after already having devoured five wives, Catherine was a bit afraid of marrying King Henry. And who could blame her, right? I mean, my goodness. But she didn't have a choice because saying no to a king basically means that your life is finished. So she agreed to marry him. And actually, she outlived him. Surprise, surprise. Because at the time when they married, King Henry VIII was already quite old in his 50s, which for that time was already really old. Um, he grew quite big and his health was really going down. He rather quickly died, they didn't have any children, and Catherine Parr married another man. And that was that. So, here we are, back at the front of the palace, as you can see. The doors have been closed, it's already past closing time. We hope you've enjoyed our vlog. Thank you for watching and please until next time. Dag!